Well, we're here with Mark uh, from Teton Telescopes, and uh, he was kind enough to do an interview with us. I, uh, Mark, uh, how long have you been uh, doing uh, this uh, industry? Like, I mean, you've got some on the now. business end of it, since I, I got the uh, the inkling, probably late '06, open actually opened the business, and uh, and then online because it seems like there's two separations because. With today's market, that's really how you sell. Sure. Is uh, and that was early '07. Early '07. Um, what got you started, I guess, in the industry to, to actually make telescopes? Well, I, I think what got me is is I'm making more of them now. But the the start was actually to get into. Uh, I've been a long time uh, fan of the uh, the early Russian lens, the TMB original TMB lines and through uh, APM and then I saw that there was no real representation for sales and even more so or perhaps more importantly service in the US and I just thought well that ain't right there's an and looked at it as an opportunity as well sure. and jumped in at that line and I love the Russian Max so one thing that kind of led to another and it was just seeing that there was no place available now, I understand what you were mentioning about the, the Russian optics. Um, Intez Microline, um, going on your website as an example, it doesn't look like anybody else is doing or, or is able to offer that line. Is that true? Are you the exclusive? Yes, uh, that just as of uh, late last year in 2009, uh, Teton Telescope has the exclusive distribution for North America wow. for Intez Micro now. So. Yeah, real proud of that. Now, on your product line with the Intez Micro, what I know people can go on your website and see, but roughly what are the size ranges uh, that you have for that line, as an example? Well, there, you can get observatory uh, class instruments up to just about any aperture because they were, Intez Micro out of Russia was always, always geared up for that because a lot of these Russian optic industries grew or or saw a second birth because they were already existing to support uh, the old Soviet Union's uh, space and astronomy and uh, uh, industry. So they were get, get used. But for on the consumer market, I'd say a vast majority are five to eight inch. Five to eight inch? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good size, actually. Mm -hmm. I guess most people would go into those. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say is your uh, core niche market? Like what, what makes, I guess, Teton telescopes unique compared to some of the other? Uh, telescope vendors out there? By and large, I'd say the number one thing I pride myself is is the service capability and not to knock the corner camera store or some of the big internet chains everybody's familiar with, uh, but having the service capability, knowing the product, uh, knowing what to recommend and being able to provide the, that service not only afterwards in the rare case, but actually I think the most of the services before the sale and I have some stuff you can't really get anywhere else. Can you give an example of what you mean by that? Um, the Intees Micro that we made mention of, okay. uh, that is sole distributor, and uh, uh, the Elzos and Lomo refractor optics, which aren't as well known or mainstream like a Mead or Celestron, but a lot of the folks that may be in the hobby after a couple of years, they go, gosh, you know, maybe I want a, the best I can get. And as those folks' knowledge base varies, they're savvy to the quality uh, of the, some of the Russian-made uh, consumer optics. What do you think are the future plans for Teton? Like, where, where are you going from here? I mean, obviously, you've got now this Russian connection and, mm -hmm. and some unique service capabilities. Where do you foresee Teton going, say, in the next two to five years? Ideally. <laughs> oh, ideally, yeah. It's funny because everything's always going to be subject to change, but more recently it's been some uh, uh, some custom-made instruments uh, for people with specialty needs. Hey, I need something ultra-light uh, for any given application. Can you custom build me this? And I'm looking for optics to this spec. Uh, uh, some uh, uh, educational institutions say, hey, maybe we need something custom-built. Sure. Uh, for near infrared, I offer that capability, and I've got one little pet project up my sleeve that I'm not going to tell you about. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Maybe you can tell us later on sometime when you get it ready to go. All right, and what we're going to be doing as well is um, I, you showed me a, one of the new um, refractors that you have. We're going to be taking some photos of that, 
and you also have a really nice daub that you were putting together um, in your workshop there, and I'd like to take some photos of that as well. Um, on the Dobsonian side, um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I mean, you've got some, it looks like some fairly unique and very, really um, functional offerings that might be very interesting. Most of it's going to be mid-aperture. Um, in that same size range that I outlined, five to eight, maybe ten inches, uh, because I utilize not only Inti's Micro, because a lot of people that maybe are have, are already familiar with that name, they instantly think Maxutops, and yes, that's where their bread and butter is. But a lot of people are unfamiliar that uh, they have uh, <laughs> they apply the same level of quality to paraboloids for Newtonian applications, uh, as spherized optics for uh, Richie Creighton's. And uh, so, uh, but I think when it comes to the Dobbs, you know, uh, the big truss models, uh, I guess the recent trend is to go bigger diameter but fast to make them uh, to where you don't need a ladder. And the Inti's Micro fits the bill right there too because the one you can take a picture at, it's F35, F35 at 1.6 wow. wave. And you get that diameter and to maintain that level of quality, a lot of, it's hard to do. No more ladders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least, no, well, maybe for me. But <laughs> well, thank you, Mark. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to just mention as, a, as in passing before we wrap up uh, about your company or, or what you're planning on doing? I I think the one thing it it be to touch on uh, what I've already mentioned is it's before the sales service. I think is is key because every amateur astronomer has unique needs so what may be an ideal instrument or instruments for one guy in one location won't necessarily fit that bill for the next so I'd like to make sure that all of our service before the sales service is oriented on making sure we can fit those needs but realizing and working with uh, my clients to make sure to narrow down what those needs are because there is no one perfect telescope so making sure you get the one that's just right for you. Um, hey, there's a, a, a buyer's remorse is a terrible thing, and I like to make sure we avoid that, and that's one thing we pride ourselves on. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today, Mark, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll look forward to some exciting things from Teton in the future. Thanks.